Close your eyes. Feel the breath as it comes in, as it goes out. And notice where you feel it most clearly. Place your attention there. And then keep it there. As for any other thoughts that come up into the mind, you don't have to pay them any attention. You're exercising your strength of mind. If you just give in to whatever urge comes, the mind never gets strong. There are times when you have to do some resistance training. You're going to resist any other thoughts, but you will cultivate an interest in the breath by making the breath comfortable. You're going to ask yourself, what kind of breathing feels best right now? An experiment. Long breathing, short breathing, fast, slow, heavy, light, deep, shallow. Try whatever combination of those qualities feels best for you right now. And as for anything else comes up, you have to remind yourself you're here because you're convinced that it's worthwhile to train the mind. When the Buddha discusses the different strengths of mind, there's conviction, persistence, mindfulness, concentration, and discernment. And they all come out of conviction. Conviction comes out of the fact that you realize there are dangers in life, but those dangers can be avoided if you are careful. If you learn how to be skillful in your actions, and so you're convinced that you're able to make yourself more skillful, and you're convinced that the Buddha's training here is a good training. When you have that kind of conviction, then persistence is easier. If you're not convinced, you put in a little effort and then you say, oh, I can't do this, I'm not getting any results. If you're convinced, you know that okay, the results may take time. As long as you haven't gotten good results yet, that means you haven't put the causes in right yet. So you keep working at the causes. Whatever lessons you learn, you're mindful to keep them in mind. Again, because of your conviction. The mind can get into concentration again because of your conviction, because you're convinced that this is a good thing to be doing. Staying here and letting go of all other thoughts and all the promises they have for the quick, easy entertainment. And then finally you develop your discernment. After all, we're convinced in the Buddha's awakening. What did he teach us through his awakening? That it is through human effort that we can find true happiness. And so as long as you're convinced that there's a way out, you'll be using your discernment to find that way. If you're not convinced that there's a way out, your discernment is not going to be that strong. It's not going to be that earnest. It's like a person lost in the jungle. If you think there's no way out, you're not going to find a way out. You just give up very easily. But if you're convinced you got into the jungle, there must be a way to get out of the jungle. And you keep on looking and you don't get discouraged. And that's how discernment develops. So cultivate your conviction that this is a good path and that you're capable of following it. And you will benefit if you do. If you're convinced in that, then the other forms of mental strength will come a lot more easily. Then you find that you can find the true happiness by training the mind. Much better than looking for the pleasures of the world outside. You've got a sense of well-being that comes from within, and that's a lot more reliable. So cultivate your conviction. Let the Buddha know what he was talking about. That this path that he teaches is a good path, and that you're capable of following it. When you have that much conviction, then the mind can be strong. And when the mind is strong, then you can see, can succeed at wherever you, whatever you put your mind to.